This Stream Deck is not plugged into that PC. It's plugged into the PC that I'm recording this video on. But yet, I am still able to control my OBS setup from this Stream Deck. That's not how Stream Decks are supposed to work. Normally, a Stream Deck can only control the PC that the Stream Deck is physically connected to. But what if you have like a two PC setup? In a typical two PC setup, you have two PCs, obviously. And normally the PC that has OBS installed on it is called the streaming PC. And the one that you play games on is called the gaming PC. And most people connect their stream deck to their streaming PC because that's the one that has OBS on it. But what if you wanted to connect your stream deck to your gaming PC? How would you control OBS then? And there's more use cases for this than you might think. On my stream, I have this display behind me that I use for showing off fan art or a custom multi-chat overlay. And that display is just a separate mini PC that has OBS running on it full screen. And I'm able to control that using the Stream Deck that's connected to my main PC. It's not just OBS though. What if you wanted to play sound effects on your streaming PC from the Stream Deck that's physically connected to your gaming PC? Or what if you wanted to launch an app on your gaming PC from the Stream Deck that's connected on your streaming PC? Or what if you wanted to control Elgato Wavelink on your gaming PC using the dials on your Stream Deck Plus on your streaming PC? The answer is a Stream Deck plugin called Multi OBS Controller. You can find the Multi OBS Controller plugin on the Elgato Marketplace. I'll leave it linked in the description. Once you have it installed, you'll see it in your Stream Deck software under Multi OBS Controller. You have all the same functions that a Stream Deck normally has, changing scenes, starting and stopping a recording, toggling filters, and you even have some new ones like the ability to refresh a browser source or restarting your camera in case it freezes in the middle of your stream. You'll have to actually connect it to OBS first. So drag in any button that you want and go into general configuration and you'll see two OBS connections. And all you have to do is go over to your gaming PC, go into OBS, tools, WebSocket server settings, and copy your port and password and put it into this field. You'll also need the IP address of that PC that you want to control, which you can get by going into the command line and typing IP config. It should look something like this. And you're pretty much good to go. This is the most seamless, pain-free plugin you'll ever find because it works almost the same as the normal OBS controls that a Stream Deck already provides. So if you drag in a scene button, it will automatically highlight that button when you're on that active scene. Or if you add in a source button, it will highlight that button if the source is active, just the way that the regular OBS controls work. But now you can do this remotely. Each button you add will have a little number in the corner, either a one or a two or both. And that number indicates which OBS connection that button controls. So if you have two OBS connections, you can tell which one is which. You can also set up the button so that it will only activate on a long press. So if you want to add a start streaming button, but only have that button activate when you do a long press, so you don't accidentally fat finger it, you can do that. But Nutty, I want to do more than that. I want to play sound effects and control Wavelink. Why do you talk like that? This plugin is only good for controlling OBS and Stream Decks are way more capable than that. What if you want to play sound effects remotely on another PC or launch apps on another PC? Or if you have an Elgato mic, what if you wanted to control Wavelink on another PC? And this is where we need StreamerBot. Look, guys, I'm sorry if you hate StreamerBot or if you use a Mac and you can't use StreamerBot, but this is the best thing I can come up with, okay? At the very least, we won't have to put up with this terrible looking UI soon. There is a massive UI overhaul coming to StreamerBot very soon, and yes, it does have dark mode. The point is, StreamerBot is capable of doing many of the same things that a Stream Deck can do, 
sound effects, launcher and programs, but more importantly, StreamerBot can be activated remotely. And even more importantly, there's a StreamerBot plugin for the Stream Deck. What we're gonna do is we're gonna install StreamerBot on our streaming PC, then install this StreamerBot Stream Deck plugin on our gaming PC, and that will allow us to have all of those features and do them remotely. If you're not familiar with StreamerBot, go watch my definitive guide up here because I will assume that you already know how to use StreamerBot, but all you need to do is turn on the Elgato Stream Deck integration in StreamerBot. If you're still on the ugly Windows 95 looking StreamerBot, it's in the integrations tab, Stream Deck. And if you're in the future, it's pretty much the same thing, except it looks way better. Just set it to auto start so you never have to worry about this setting again. And then over on your gaming PC, head to the Elgato Marketplace and install the StreamerBot plugin. You should see a new section that says StreamerBot. So let's say you wanted to play a sound effect over on your streaming PC, but from the Stream Deck connected on your gaming PC. Here's how this works. Go into StreamerBot on your streaming PC and create a new action and add a play sound sub action. Then in the Stream Deck software on your gaming PC, drag in an action button. And the first time you do it, you will have to connect to StreamerBot. So click in the cog, add a StreamerBot connection and put in the IP address of your streaming PC. The port number should be 8059, double check that as well. And you're good to go. Anything you can do in StreamerBot, you can trigger from your Stream Deck, even if the Stream Deck is connected to another PC. If you If you just wanna launch a program on your streaming PC, just make an action, add a run a program sub action and select a program that you want to open. And then over in your stream deck, you just select the action that you just created. And then now when you press that button, it's gonna launch the program that you selected. The Stream Deck Plus has dials that you could use to control your audio levels in Wavelink, but Wavelink has the same problem that the Stream Deck has. You could only control Wavelink from the Stream Deck connected to that same PC. If your Stream Deck is connected to a different PC, it's not able to talk to Wavelink. But StreamerBot can talk to Wavelink. You just enable it in the integrations tab, just like you did to connect StreamerBot to your Stream Deck. And what you do here is create a new action. We'll call it volume up and then add a sub action. Set input volume. You select which channel that you want to control then turn on adjustment. This is the part where you're gonna need a little bit of programming knowledge, but let me just give you the answer right here. You wanna put in this box percent ticks percent in, in the volume box. I'll explain why in a second. Also create a second action and name it volume down. Repeat all the steps again, and then this time put in the same thing that you put in before. Now we can assign those actions to a dial on our Stream Deck Plus. Just drag over an action dial and set the dial rotate up interaction to volume up and set the dial rotate down interaction to volume down. I know it's a little convoluted, but I promise it works really well. What the hell is that? Percent takes percent. I don't know what I just typed in. That's what we call in the programming world, a variable. And you can learn all about variables with today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you ever wanted to learn how to program, Brilliant is a really great place to start. They've got a ton of interactive lessons on math, science, but most importantly, their programming catalog is actually really cool. Rather than sitting down and watching a bunch of boring lectures and tutorials, they use interactive lessons with tons of animated graphics and little buttons for you to press so that you can actually see how programming works and not just you put in a bunch of lines of code and you don't actually understand any of it, but it works 
and you just have to like just accept it. It's a lot more effective, especially if you're a visual learner like me. It only takes a couple of minutes a day and they even have an app so you could do a couple quick lessons while you're waiting for the bus. You Americans don't have public transport, but just pretend that you know what that's like. They have a course called Programming with Variables. I highly recommend starting with this one if you've never programmed before. You'll learn how to write simple expressions like the one I showed you before. If you ever plan on doing more advanced stuff with StreamerBot, you'll see stuff like this all the time. If you're interested in trying out Brilliant, check them out in the link down below, brilliant.org slash nutty, or scan the QR code on screen and get 20% off an annual subscription to their premium plan. Or you can just try it out for 30 days completely for free. Speaking of programming, I've been programming a lot of free widgets that you can get over on my website, nutty.gg. The best place to get stream widgets or something like that, top top 100 at least, I'm pretty confident about that. I released a free music widget last month that you could add to your stream. I also released special widgets exclusive for members. This month, all of the members have been trying out my upcoming multi-chat overlay that shows Twitch chat and YouTube chat in a single stream of messages. And you can try that out too, it's $10 a month, but you can, you can just cancel after one month. Don't tell anyone though, I'm trying to, trying to make some money out of this. Anyway, come back next week for stuff, yeah?